thingies, auto vlog thingies. Should have anticipated he was turning. Anyway, just out for a little rip after work. Figured I'd chat at you guys for a bit. So, um, anyway, since the last moto vlog, yeah, it's been a busy week. It's also been a cold week, which is kind of BS, but it is what it is. Right now, it's currently eight degrees Celsius. I'm just uh, heading through sort of the outskirts of downtown Fredericton. Good to get on the bridge, head across the river, go for a little ride, go home. But uh, yeah, eight degrees Celsius, but it was like minus five this morning. So I didn't actually take the bike to work. I went home afterwards and I'm just going out for a little rip. And we'll have to stop right here. previous vlog I took you across the other bridge now we're gonna go across the Westmoreland Street Bridge again this is sort of the tail end of rush hour <laughs> here in beautiful Fredericton New Brunswick and um, there's some remarks about how I wish that uh, the traffic around places like Boston was so sparse like that and this is actually it's thinned out quite a bit not gonna lie but uh, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that rush hour here is all that bad because it really truly isn't. We want this lane. We're going to go for a little roundabout scenic route home. When you're on a motorcycle, the scenic route is always the correct route. Unless you're in a rush, but you know. Who's kidding who? Why are you going to go out on the bike if you're in a rush? Waste of a ride. North side of Fredericton. Probably swing up through Marysville or something like that. It's nice down here along the river. Beautiful. Can't wait for you know it to be more than five degrees in the morning. Makes for a beautiful ride to work. Anyway, so I got some stuff going on in the month of May. Um, three music performances and. Um, so I'm playing, actually I'm on hiatus kind of until the 19th, but uh, actually we'll go this way, we'll go straight and we'll cut across. Anyway, I got a performance coming up, a duo act, or well, the duo act with my sister called Creative Differences, talked about that one before. We're playing on the 19th, which is a Thursday night. 7 p.m. here in uh, in Fredericton at Ringo's Bar and Grill, and that's uh, up in the corner of Smythe and Prospect. So if you're in town, check that out. And then my two performances um, as a part of the Living Roots Music Festival at the end of the month are at uh, 7:30 p.m. on Friday, May 27th, and that's at Cinnamon Cafe downtown Fredericton, and. My Saturday performance is actually 2.30 in the afternoon, I think. And that is at Grim Ross Brewing Company, Uptown Fredericton. So uh, I'll leave those event descriptions in the, uh, in the description box of this video. Just in the off chance that you are local to Fredericton and want to check that out. And uh, a few of you have been saying, you know, if, if I'm ever in town and you're playing, I'd love to come uh, check that out. So, yeah! Sorry if this is boring, I'm just kind of chilling out and relaxing. As I suspected, it wouldn't be long into the doing the moto vlogs where I just kind of didn't know what to talk about. It's not like I can carry notes around with me. <laughs> well, I suppose I could tape into the gas tank or something, but it's, uh, it's probably a safety hazard. It's definitely a safety hazard, who's can do? So, um, anyway, things are getting going with the band. We have a couple of potential gigs in June and July. Uh, three or four of them. 
Uh, we did just launch a website, aotpband.com, link in the description, and uh, also a Twitter account, which only has a handful of followers, so you can go over there and be among the first 10 or so followers, and that's uh, AOTP Band NB. Band is art of the possible. Anyway, life is good. We're just getting back together uh, this weekend after a two-week hiatus. My sister, who also sings in the band, she was away on vacation in Cuba. So uh, we just kind of tooled around with our, our PA system, which is pretty sweet. It's a Behringer X32. We run in-ear monitoring, which is fantastic. I highly recommend it to uh, any of the any of you that play music. And you know, you don't have to go the expensive route, but uh, like I have, it's like a hundred and something dollar pair of sheer in sure in-ear monitors and they do the trick they work great i'm isolated from the drums i can hear myself play i can hear myself sing it's uh quite a different experience from if you're used to uh just playing in a small space with floor monitors and i mean i've obviously done lots of that as well but uh you know when you're playing in a small space and you're standing three feet from your drummer, it's kind of hard to hear yourself, even with good floor monitors. And, you know, if he's uh, aggressive with the cymbals, and our drummer is aggressive with the cymbals at times, I think we've affectionately called him Megatron on more than one occasion. <laughs> anyway, at the end of the night, your ears are ringing pretty bad. So even from the perspective of protecting your hearing, um, having some good ear mo in ear monitoring that uh, cuts down on the ambient stage noise is super fantastic. And I was actually watching a, a Rob Chapman video. Chappers, I don't know if any of you guys follow him, but uh, he was talking about his vocal journey and, and how it became easier for him to perform. Uh, after, and his voice didn't wear out as much after he, he put in ears in. And it's absolutely true because you're not singing to try and hear yourself over the band. Um, you know, so you wind up kind of taking it a little bit easier. You can be a little bit more delicate with your vocals, if you will. Delicate with your vocal cords. It allows you to add more dynamic range to your performance. It's wonderful. Now I'm just kind of rambling. We're kind of cruising through Marysville. Up the not-so-mighty Nashwalk River, which is there on my right. Then we're going to swing around through, um, it's kind of a, an historic part of town where the old cotton mill used to be, which I'll point out to you. And then we're just going to loop looping back around onto uh, like an arterial road, we'll probably cut it off there. Nothing nothing to see there for the most part. Anyway, so a few of you guys uh, like the vlogs, which is awesome. I, I appreciate it. I like doing it, as I said. Uh, shout out to Rebel Forged, who's a fellow New Brunswick vlogger over in Moncton, New Brunswick. And uh, that's pretty close by. So once the riding weather is uh, seasons in full swing, we'll have to get a get a group together because there are some uh, some friends from like the battlefield days that are in and around New Brunswick. Uh, if you remember Nathy, she's uh, settled uh, in New Brunswick, and, and there's some, some others around Moncton as well. So I'm gonna go actually meet face to face with some of my uh, my online friends that I haven't seen either in a long time or ever at all. That would be cool. tell like most of the parts of Fredericton that I've been uh, riding around lots of older homes you know dating back some of them well over a hundred years although for folks in Europe I mean they just gotta laugh at that right only a hundred years old that's pretty modern but this is North America right we're only on like a slightly more than what a 500 year time scale over here I'm sure that Mr. Columbus was not the first to hit North America. Uh, there's mounting evidence that the Vikings visited Newfoundland far before that, but uh, you know what I'm saying. You know, late 1400s, early 1400s, who knows. But it's pretty cool when you visit places like Rome or, or whatever and you get to check out stuff that's been around for thousands of years, which is kind of mind-boggling. Anyway, we're crossing the Nashwalk. We're, uh, that's the old cotton mill that I'm looking at there. It's now uh, been converted like government offices and that sort of thing.
Community Organic Gardens. And that parking lot right over there to the right, that's where they have the uh, Motorcycle Safety Foundations course. They start, uh, should be starting now. They usually run uh, Thursday in the classroom and then Friday through Sunday in the parking lot. Pretty good course, highly recommend. Well, actually it's mandatory now, so they've changed the uh, They've changed the licensing requirements here in New Brunswick. Um, the motorcycle course used to be optional, now it is mandatory. And I believe that even if you've been driving a car for 20 years, uh, you still get a graduated license. So you have to um, you know, pass that course, get your initial license, and then I think they have implemented it so you have to go back for a, uh, I don't know if you have to go back for a follow-up test or you just have to ride for like a year where you can't ride after dark, you can't ride with a passenger, you can't pull a trailer and that sort of thing. Which isn't too restrictive I suppose, but uh, I mean I, uh, I kind of like riding at night. And I don't kind of wear all the gear all the time. Um, I do have sort of a three-quarter helmet on, got my gloves on, jacket just because, well, I mean, I always wear a jacket, although it's absolutely necessary right now because it's so freaking cold, uh, but I'm just wearing jeans, so, you know, riding around in my armchair, basically. <laughs> I know lots of people like to make fun of Harleys, but, uh, man, it's comfy. I'm old. I don't want to be crouched over and rolling around on a crotch rocket. Leave me alone. But anyway, as I was just saying, uh, yeah, I don't rock out here all the time, but at night I do have like a, a reflective safety vest that I throw on so people can see me a bit better. The lights on the front of this bike are pretty good. It's got the headlight that you can see and there's two spotlights on either side. So I mean, it's bigger than a Honda Fit. <laughs> and more visible, but at night it's good to have that additional visibility from behind. So I do wear uh, my safety gear, and uh, I do enjoy riding at night. I'm just kind of cruising through the countryside here, um, getting back towards where I cut off to go home. I know that this has been uh, almost a non-humorous Seinfeldian vlog about almost nothing, but I uh, hope you enjoyed it anyway, guys. I'm gonna cut it off and uh, ride on home, and I uh, hope you guys have a great rest of the week. I'll probably get out and record some of my rides. Hopefully on the weekend it's not going to be too busy and I'll be able to get out and, uh, and enjoy it. And it's supposed to be warmer too, so that'll be a bonus. Cheers, guys. Those of you that ride, ride safe, and for the rest of you, we'll talk soon. Oh yeah, I might give you a bit of bonus pothole feel footage. Check this shit out. Huh? And what happens is when you're driving in the opposite direction, cars, cars in this lane don't give a shit. They go across the center line to avoid that. It's just lovely. Anyway, I'm out of here.